So let's take a look at the beginning of part one, which in a way, I think at least dramatically, is really the beginning of the book, it's the beginning of the journey. So let's note first, part one, the sickness unto death is despair. Look at the title of the book, The Sickness Unto Death, and you get a little explanation there. Well, The Sickness, sickness Unto Death is Despair. And that may mean nothing at this point, but that's the way the book goes. It, it, it should gradually explain itself. And if we look at the... I just want to concentrate, really, on the very opening parts. Both uh, confusing and really funny, and I think also perhaps profound. Especially this opening paragraph on page 43, and if you'll indulge me, I'd like to read it. The human being is spirit. But what is spirit? Spirit is the self. But what is the self? The self is a relation which relates to itself, or that in the relation which is its relating to itself. The self is not the relation, but the relations relating to itself. A human being is a synthesis of the infinite and the finite, of the temporal and the eternal, of freedom and necessity. In short, a synthesis. A synthesis is a relation between two terms. Looked at in this way, a human being is not yet a self. It's absolutely clear, right? No, it's not. And I, I love reading that because students laugh. What the heck is going on here? But if you start unpacking uh, this, it, it really is not gobbledygook. It's, uh, it may be presented in a kind of a joking way. I mean, Kierkegaard, who knows what you know he was thinking when he wrote this, but um, it's, it's, not a, it's both a joke and it's serious. And maybe jokes are the most serious things of all. And certainly, if just because something is a joke is not a reason to not take it seriously. The human being is spirit. Of course. Uh, of course the human being is spirit. Uh, spirit, I, I think that in the background here, all this is written in Danish, we have the German, and we have the influence of this philosopher Hegel, who we may or may not sort of talk about as the thing that was on. And the German word uh, for spirit, or the infamous German word for spirit is geist. It's like ghost. Who the heck knows what geist is? It's spirit. I mean, generally speaking, the human being is spirit. Yeah, uh, spirit in the sense that there's something more to the human being. There's more than just the physical. To be a human being is being, to be more than a body. It, it, there's, there's, there's something else to us, whether we want to call it spirit or soul or mind or personality or whatever it is. We know that when we look at a human being, we are dealing with something that is more than a body, that there is something that is hidden, something else is there. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a person. But what is this something else? We said the human being is spirit. But what is spirit? The spirit is the self. Okay, so when I'm looking at a human being, the, the, the something else that I assume, the, the dimension of the person, is their selfhood, or, or being a self means to have that, that something else. So to be a self is to somehow be more than, than just a body, more than just a material thing. Spirit is the self, but what is the self? The self is a relation which relates to itself. So he'll go on in the paragraphs, the rest of the paragraphs, to, to tell you why he thinks that we are a relation the relation between these two op these poles of uh, freedom and necessity, uh, the temporal and the eternal. But I think the important thing to, to grasp there is perhaps, or to try to interpret there, is what he means by a relation which relates to itself. And if I'm not mistaken, what he means, generally speaking, there by relating to itself is self-consciousness, being self-aware, uh, not only existing, but knowing that one exists, and being in that relation with oneself. So, the human being is spirit in the sense that 
we are something more than just our bodies or what is apparent well, to the rest of the world immediately through the senses. That spirit is being a self, as opposed to being a thing, as opposed to being an object. To be a subject is to be a self. But what does it mean to be a self, or what is the essential characteristic for Kierkegaard of being a self? It is being aware of oneself, being self-conscious. So what he seems to be telling us is that you cannot be a self without being aware of being a self, or it's our self-awareness that makes us, that constitutes our selfhood. The self is not the relation, but the relations relating to itself. That is, uh, we are, the self is its self-consciousness. And in the course of reading this book, again, the notion of self-awareness and self-consciousness is perhaps the most important thing. That is, if we look at the book as a kind of a gradual awakening or an enlightenment, that it is the journey of the self coming to know itself, becoming more and more and more deeply aware of itself. The human being is a synthesis of the infinite and the finite, of the temporal and the eternal, of freedom and necessity. That to be a human being is to be made up of different types of things. On the one hand, uh, to be both infinite, to be mind or spirit, and finite, to be body. To be both temporal, limited, in time, physical, and eternal, to have something about you that is out of time, that is immortal, of freedom, the capacity for choice, to have options, free will, and necessity, just being a body subject to the necessary laws of physics. That is, to be a human being is to be to have these two natures, but to be a self is something different. He says, that's why he says at the end, look at it in this way, a human being is not yet a self. That is, we all qualify as human beings. If we've got the DNA, you know, if we've got the minimal capacities for being human, we're, everybody qualifies as a human being. You can't help but be a human being. But to be a self, that takes an act, that takes an effort. And as we see, what he's saying, I think, in that the first paragraph, is that the essence of being a self as opposed to merely being an animal, being a human animal, is a awareness of oneself. So what we get out of that paragraph, which is both funny and kind of ridiculous, and but I think it's, he's saying something very definite, that the most important aspect to being a self, to being a person, uh, a person in the fullest sense, not just an animal that happens to be human, but a person who is you know, it has all the capacities, uh, moral and otherwise, uh, we assume in person. The, the most essential aspect is self-consciousness or self-awareness.